I'm Jana Shrevinsky and you're watching TVP World Talks where every word matters. We are turning towards the weather-related crisis in parts of Central and Eastern Europe now. Dramatic footage has already been prevalent in the media showing many towns and cities flooded by rivers which have burst their banks due to excessive rainfall. And the threat is not going to be gone anytime soon because of further rainfall, but also because the water is making its way downstream, threatening larger cities. Could this situation have been avoided? And how is such a crisis to be dealt with by the individual governments, by the emergency responders and by the population? We're going to be asking all these questions and more to our guest today, Mateusz Grigoruk, professor at the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Hello, good morning. So let us begin with the current situation. Uh, do you think that the worst is yet to come for parts of the population, given that there are larger cities located further downstream? If we limit our analysis to Poland, for example, we're talking about the city of Wrocław. Well, of course, in other countries, there might be similar problems down the line. So what is your assessment at this stage? I mean, so first and foremost, we are now uh, in between of uh, the situation. So we don't have yet a general overview of what is happening right now. Uh, what is even more important is that we are lacking some data at the moment because some, some of gauging stations at, uh, at our rivers of concern I, are not working well. So so we are, we are still uh, moving within some kind of an unknown matter. Um, that is why it is very hard to make an assessment. What I think, uh, but this is my uh, pr private opinion right now, is that uh, water getting further downstream to the larger cities like like Wrocław will have some more room to to uh, to, to feel. So uh, I I wouldn't expect the situation to be that much dramatic. But still, the situation is very dynamic now. The biggest concern is that whether the floodways from different catchments uh, will overlap or maybe they will pass by each other. Uh, if they overlap, then we might have uh, serious issues with, with uh, larger discharges of our rivers. But if they if they pass by, so if, if one flood wave passes another, then, then the situation is much more safe. However, uh, it is an unknown phenomenon. Uh, I, I have no idea what might happen over the coming days. I have a feeling now that uh, we must be prepared for, for everything for worse because still uh, it's a very dynamic uh, um, state of our rivers right now. So let's take a look now at how the situation developed. We had a, a massive low pressure system making its way uh, from the south, which caused the rainfall. And initially, uh, the torrential rain hit mountainous regions of Poland and other countries in the region. Are these regions uh, susceptible to these phenomena insofar as the ability to try and avoid them is concerned? Is it even possible to avoid uh, this uh, given that you know, the larger reservoirs are located downstream and these towns and cities are located near fairly small rivers which all of a sudden uh, swell in volume and have to carry much more water than normally? Well, these areas... Uh uh, are susceptible to this type of phenomena, but none of the investments that have been done yet in the history, they were done for this type of torrential rain. So please remember that the amount of precipitation that fought was very hard to be uh, foreseen in advance. Moreover, the situation over Europe over the last days and, and even weeks was uh, fairly unknown before. So let's, let's have a look at, at the Mediterranean Sea which is located quite far away, but it is the main reason that this sea was uh, uh, having very high water temperatures. And above this sea, we got uh, really, really um, uh, specific situation of a lot of steam, a lot of uh, humidity getting up to the atmosphere and then being transferred to Austria, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Hungary and Romania at the moment. So, so this situation, uh, the mechanism standing behind this situation is well known. I mean, we all know that this situation might happen. However, they do not happen frequently in this time of year. And even though they do, then they do not have this intensities of accumulation of water in the atmosphere and the rainfall. Uh, so answering your question, uh, whether it was to be avoided, I, 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 I doubt it, it could have been avoided. I mean, none of the reservoirs nor the river valleys are prone to uh, 
receive and then transfer further this high amount of water. So if you look at the function of the reservoirs that are now present within the Watsko Valley and, and the, the other valleys around, which are, which are, which are now experiencing this disaster flood, they are nearly all filled to the top. Some of them are overtopped. Some of them uh, do not have any storage capacity uh, ready for any other flood, so they, they, they do not work. To put things short, they do not work at the moment because they are full. Uh, that is why I think it is not uh, much we can do now. Uh, uh, and uh, that is why I think this flood uh, is going to be a kind of a game changer for thinking about water management in this part of Europe for, for the coming uh, years and decades. So what kind of investments would be necessary to deal with this? I mean, um, almost immediately after this situation, there have been social media posts, for example, pointing towards Tokyo and the massive uh, subterranean reservoir which they have built there. Uh, by my mean, you know, uh, to be fair, I mean, it's not to be expected to, to, to be repeated on a large scale beneath every single town and city just because of the prohibitive cost. So realistically, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think might be necessary in order to prevent this from occurring in the near future, once this crisis is over? Mm, uh, I think I would disappoint you right now, because uh, have a look. After the flood in 1997, uh, Poland and neighboring countries spent huge efforts and, and huge funds on improving uh, flood prevention systems. They do work, and have a look right now, we are not experiencing any panic. So, so the situation is hard. It is a dramatic flood, but it's completely different than it used to be in 1997. So when you ask about the investments, I have a feeling that there is not much to be done in terms of technology. I would point out three fields of investment. So one, we should consider environment as an investment. Of course, it is not easy to say whether the forest on the mountaintops could, could prevent this flood, but for sure it would reduce the flood wave reaching the downstream uh, areas of the rivers and valleys. So, so environment should be considered an investment. I have a feeling that we should now think about uh, implementing nature-based solutions wherever possible. So it should not only be the city, it should be the area of the landscape, in agriculture, in forestry, in, in any area around. So it is all about every drop of water, because at the end of the day, the single drops are the ones who uh, overtop the jar with, uh, with, with a huge amount of water collected before. Investment number two would be spatial planning. We should reconsider the fact that uh, we are living in a changing environment. Something that used to work in the past will never work in the future, especially given the high emission rates uh, concerning greenhouse gases and the global warming, the climatic change which we are experiencing right now. I would even say that this is the, the bill we are paying for, for, for emitting carbon dioxide and, and uh, just uh, uh, the lack of luck uh, makes us the ones to pay the bill. Uh, and investment number three would be uh, societal perception. So we should know that with this huge amounts of water, it is very hard to do anything in the field. So we must be prepared that this type of floods will happen. Uh, what is interesting, the flood of 1997 was considered the flood of a uh, millennium. Have a look now, we have another flood, which is very similar to that one in terms of quantity of water, which is transferred downstream the rivers. This is another flood of millennium, but the difference, the temporal difference between them is like 30 years or so. So these are not floods of the millennia. These are the floods of 30 years intervals, and we should consider those phenomena like something that will be our close neighbor in the coming future. And you've mentioned changing our attitudes, changing our habits. Would that mean simply limiting development in areas which are prone to flooding, which unfortunately still keeps happening? Or would you even say that areas which have been inhabited traditionally for decades, even centuries, like, you know, we've seen historic centers of these towns being flooded. Would you say that uh, keeping them there would no longer be uh, a, um, a tenable perspective for, for the population. On the other hand, of course, we have historic buildings there which are worth protecting. So how to solve this dilemma? I have a feeling that we, we, we have enough of revolutions and the flood is the revolution. So it changes everything now in the field. 
but uh, uh, this should be uh, more uh, um, tackled with a special planning. So special planning should be slow. We should we should keep on protecting the areas that are already inhabited, but further development of any new constructions and uh, any new decent elements of our infrastructure uh, developed within the floodplain area should be avoided. And this is to be done uh, with just one or maybe two signatures. I'm, I'm not very good in this legal uh, creating works, but I, I have a feeling that the sooner we start with uh, a wise management of floodplains, the earlier we will see the benefits of that. Of course, it is not a day-to-day -day, uh, management perspective. It's, it's, it's more kind of uh, 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, so so, so I, would, uh, I would rather say that we should start the process of adaptation to climatic change with uh, wise spatial planning and uh, landscape management. Uh, what happens after the water g goes down? To what extent do you think the damage is reversible? Is it better for a building to be flooded relatively quickly and then uh, for the water to essentially leave the area? Or uh, would you say that more damage would be done to uh, buildings and areas which are likely to be flooded for an extended period of time? Uh, can you run us through the mechanics of, of recovery uh, in this regard? Uh... So I'm a hydrologist. I am not that much into the construction uh, uh, foundations and this type of stuff. But from uh, what I know and from what I saw in the field, uh, when, when it comes to floods, we are talking about two different perspectives. So one perspective is a high flood, which lasts for a relatively short period of time. And the other one is not that high flood, which lasts for a long time. A uh, long period of time, like a couple of days or even weeks. Uh, it is very hard for any elements of our infrastructure to withstand any of those conditions. However, I have a feeling that the second one, so the latter, the long lasting floods, which are um, to, to which our constructions are exposed, are much more dramatic because much more elements of our infrastructure, like dikes, like 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 roads, railways, and so, uh, are are um, um, affected by by water, and they are not planned to withstand this type of harsh conditions for a long time perspective. So that is why I have a feeling that this flood that we are we are observing here and, and, and the dramatic situation in many places over the South Poland uh, that are facing wave number one, wave number two, then increased precipitation over, over the coming days. And again, some flooding that can uh, enter Poland from Czech Republic. This would uh, challenge our infrastructure uh, the most. Uh, as, a, as a person, as a human, I think for me, uh, either of the scenarios you mentioned would be dramatic because if water is in your house, if water is on your road, if your road is uh, degraded, then you should start thinking how to make up this mess uh, rather sooner than later. How much will it cost and whether to do it the same matter, the same place uh, to make it exposed to the future floods, which are for sure going to happen. And of course, apart from crisis management, there is also the question of managing the losses, managing the recovery following this disaster. So very much and unfortunately a developing story that we'll be keeping track on as events continue to unfold. Mateusz Grigoruk was our guest today here on TVP World. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your expertise. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. And I'm Inna you're watching TVP World. Please do stay with us.